Hello, welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. This week I am, I am going to be doing my usual review later in the week, but before that comes up, I have a little editorial rant to do. This time I am raising my ire at GameStop. For those who've been following the, or rather haven't been following gaming news, you may have missed that the latest title in the Deus Ex series, Deus Ex Invisible War, is coming out, or rather has come out this week. This week being the week of the 22nd. Monday, well, 22nd, 21st. Anyway. And, well, there's been some controversy related to this. Not because of any DRM feature or anything like that on the game, but because of something that's happened with the PC release and one of the retailers in the uh, this, that has been mishandling it. And by one of the retailers, I mean the biggest video game retailer in the United States dedicated video game retailer, GameStop. You see, when Square Enix released the game, in the box for it came a coupon granting the holder one free, co was a free copy or free access to the game on the online video game streaming service OnLive. For those who are unfamiliar with this, basically OnLive is a service where they have video games hosted on their own computers and their computers will run the game for you and stream the gameplay to you over the internet. As you can imagine, this works better for some games more than others, like racing games, not that well, but perhaps shooting games a bit better. Ideally, for this, you need to have a very good internet connection. We're talking like Fios, we're talking like, not even ca maybe like really good cable, but preferably something like Fios. And also, I mean, it still would help to have a good graphics card just so you can display your screen, display it on HD on your screen. Um, it would be worth having a good monitor too. But anyway, basically, I, ideally, what this does is it lets players who may not be able to have a computer that could handle this game on their on its own let them play games which are really good looking and new at a cost which they can handle better at something that's more in their price range and without having to spend a couple hundred bucks to upgrade their computer or even a thousand bucks not even a thousand bucks but you have a few hundred bucks to upgrade their computer Games, uh, GameStop earlier this year had purchased the Impulse online game sales service from Stardock who you may recognize as the creator of the, Gal of the Galactic Civilization games and they had been taught didn't talk to some companies and had bought a few companies who were working on developing their own game streaming service that GameStop had hoped to incorporate into Impulse to allow on to basically allow them to compete with OnLive. So when GameStop heard about the coupon, they didn't take this well. Now, here's a question for you. If you were the manager of a game chain, of the largest game chain in the United States, and, and thus could someone who could possibly end up under scrutiny, under some major scrutiny, if you did something oh anti-competitive, what would you do in a case like this? Would you just roll with it? Would you perhaps open a few copies of the game and take out the coupon? Would you? keep the game off the shelves entirely or and complain to the publisher perhaps asking for copies without this without it or some combination of the, of the of those well if you picked B and C you'd be correct actually rather D the sum of the above because here's what happened GameStop sent a memorandum to their employees in at the store level, instructing them to open up the games, take the coupons out, reseal them, and sell them as new, and not disclose this to the customer. So, same price, but you have had basically a coupon code taken from you. Needless to say, or actually, no, I'm not going to say needless to say, but as you can imagine, this was not covered up well. This was not kept. This is one. This is a secret, which was very easily disclosed, because ultimately you're putting this policy in the hands of a bunch 
of dissatisfied, underpaid, overworked, somewhat overworked, and, and certainly heavily shat on low-level employees. So this memorandum was leaked. Oh boy, was it leaked. I mean, GameSpy got sent got sent a copy. Not like they had to they reported the story from someone else. They got emailed a copy of the memorandum. Wired got emailed a copy of the memorandum. Um, everybody got a copy of the memo. We got sent a copy of the memo by some by dissatisfied employees. Other people, I mean, it's just a question of who posted the news story first. And so, as you, and so, frankly, well, shit hit the fan. Oh boy, did shit hit the fan. I don't have news footage of this, so I can't post fo post footage for you. But I was in full. But one of the things I read about this is that uh, not like the head of GameStop, but Mucky Mucks and GameStop ended up having to talk to CNN about this. This made CNN. Not like this is oh, this is a slow news day. This made CNN. There's stuff going on in the world that's a big deal. There's the hurricane that's about to clobber the East Coast, if not is currently actively clobbering the East Coast. There's the fact there's the manhunt for Gaddafi in Libya. There is there is stuff going on that's important. I mean hey hell, major storm. That's like the bread and butter of the twenty four hour news cycle. Because you can have some poor bastard who hasn't earned seniority out there in that shit. Just out there standing in the in the rain or depending on the weather in the rain and the wind and the blowing debris in a parka. That's the stuff. I mean, that's the stuff that Twenty Four Hours News Networks were born on, and they took time out of their busy out of their schedule for this. That says something for the spectac for how bad this fuck up was, but fuck it up they did. So, games and so having been called on the carpet on this, game spot. GameStop had to do a response. Had to do a policy response. You can't just issue a statement and hope it'll die down. There are angry customers out there. And what did GameStop do? GameStop said, "Okay, we will pull the game. We will recall the game and refuse to sell it until we get a copy from the publisher without the offending coupon." That didn't work either. Again, memo leaked. And again, people are upset. Because it doesn't fix the problem. You're not giving people their coupon back. You're... And you've still engaged in anti-competitive practices. And, and that's really the problem here. You are the large... You, okay, you are the largest video game retailer in the United States. Yes, you can buy games through Amazon. Yes, you can, buy, you can go to Best Buy. Or go to Walmart and buy games there. When it comes to broad selection of video games... Amazon has a massive chunk about um, Amazon and GameStop are basically splitting the difference on the online space for selling physical media on the internet. And when it comes to dedicated video game stores in the real world, with in terms with broad selection and that sort of thing, in physical, you walk into a store, pick a game off the shelf, and leave. GameStop has that beat. GameStop, I mean, there are independent stores. I live in Oregon. I know I'm wearing a Seattle shirt, but I live in Oregon. We have some, there are independent retail stores, but compared to GameStop, they succeed based on, I mean, the independent stores, the reason they survive is because they have retro titles. Is, I mean, yes, you, you lure people in with a grand, with a big event for the launch of the next new Halo game, but if you sell a copy of Oh, let's say Final Fantasy 2 SNES. You get more money. You, you get all. Oh, that's all profit. That's all gravy. That's so. People are upset. People are very upset. And justifiably so. This is anti competitive. Yes, on live, technically before this had the monopoly on the online gaming stri game streaming service, but that just because no one else had come up to compete with them yet. It wasn't they were engaging in practices to discriminate. However, by doing this policy of pulling out the coupons, you are being anti-competitive. 
yes, you don't have the monopoly on online game. Yes, GameStop doesn't have the monopoly on online game streaming. In fact, they haven't even fully properly rolled out the service yet. And actually, it's entirely possible that GameFly will beat them to it. But here's the thing. GameStop has a near monopoly on physical game... I mean, that's not necessarily a near monopoly on physical game retails, but they are the only game in town for dedicated video game stores. So, for that, they are leveraging their near domination of the market against a competitor in a fashion which is anti-competitive. Is the FTC going to investigate on this? I don't know. I don't know if anyone's probably filed a complaint on this yet. I don't know if this fits a criteria on this yet. I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer. But this, was a f but this was a major mess up on the part of GameStop. And this isn't over yet. GameStop has recognized that their last two... That their last attempt to cover their butt by just pre-calling the game didn't quite cut it. It wasn't quite cutting it. Because also for the offended customers, all they could offer was a trade-in for basically full purchase price of the game and in-store credit. So now they're, what they're doing is they're offering everyone who purchased the game and is affected by this $50 of in-store credit and a used game Yep, with the purchase of two other used games. Now... If you know anything about the history of video games, you may remember when Nintendo, or if you're really old school, or follow, or follow the history of video games and are interested in that, you may know that when Nintendo was sued for antitrust by Atari and several others because of their discriminatory practices with, purchasing, with the publishing of games in the United States by forbidding publishers from adding additional chips to games, forcing them to forcing games to be manufactured by Nintendo, limiting the number of games that came out, and that sort of thing. And what happened then, as the restitution for this, is that Nintendo was basically forced to give everyone five dollars game uh, credit on a game, and that's it on the game or accessory, and that's it. That didn't hurt Nintendo at all. It just helped. In fact, it helped them. GameStop's restitution in this case doesn't hurt them. Your fifty-dollar in-store credit plus one free used game with the purchase of two used games maybe, maybe might cost them some might cost them some money for people getting games for free. In terms of maybe some people, if they budget things right and choose their game, play their cards wisely, might be able to pick two used games with that they can buy with just their fifty dollars of in-store credit, and thus they don't have to pay any money. But otherwise, what's going to happen is either that fifty dollars in-store credit is going to go for a whole new game, and then or something else, and ultimately, this is going to get going to get more money for GameStop. This doesn't hurt them. This isn't an apology. This is a non-apology. Right to the contrary. This is just this is just another. They're doing it as a marketing ploy. Now, again, I live in Oregon. I'm fortunate. I can if I say, I'm not going to go shop at GameStop anymore. I can put my money where my mouth is. I can go. I can go to a couple other video game retailers in the area like, for example, Game Trader in Beaverton, and I can buy my games there. I can never walk into a GameStop again to buy a game, if I so choose. And I won't necessarily be hurting myself and my game sales much. If anything, I might. all I'll be doing is spending more money on gas to get there, as opposed to going to the nearest GameStop or what have you to get the game. So I can so if I I can get out of it. I can say, "All right, that's it. I'm done with GameStop." Not everyone not everyone has this luxury. There are some areas where the only game retailer is GameStop or Walmart. If you want to buy a game, maybe there's a Best Buy. 
and of course online. And that's not necessarily the best option for a lot of people. So, there are a lot of people who are boned on this. And it's getting easier. Internet sales has gotten getting better. Amazon's a, basically a, a really good retailer for buying video games. So I can't say. So I'm not going to say I'm going to lead the push for a boycott of GameStop on this, because I know there are lots of people who will sign up, who will sign on, and who can't walk, who either won't walk the walk or can't walk the walk. They sign on, discover, oh, well, if I want to buy a game, I have to go to GameStop. I don't have a choice not to. So I'm not sure what we can, do, what can be done on this. Here's my best bet is for, for a way to get some sort of restitution is for GameStop to basically go and say, all right, really, we really, really effed up. And if we, the coupons have probably been thrown out. The coupons are gone. But maybe, I mean, the... Find a way to get deal with on live. I know you. I know they'd rather not, if at all possible, give their competitor money, but that's what they're gonna have to do, in my opinion, if they really want to make this right. If they really want to say, "We messed up. We apologize. We won't do it again," and mean it, you have to find a way to undo what you did in some way. It's not just because this is something where you actually can undo what you did. This isn't like, oh, a server, our service is down for a month. That physical time has passed. I can't rewind the clock. This is something that you can actually spend some money and undo. You can, so GameStop, I doubt that anyone there in management is actually watching this, but you can undo what you did if you choose. You can get in more coupons. You can put the game back on the shelf with the coupons intact. You can take back the recall. Or alternatively, even just put the game back on the shelf, do your standard, keep with your offer, uh, with, with your existing recall, and then maybe have a code set up where that players can get in touch with On Live or Game or Square Enix to get their coupon or what have you for the game, something like that. But currently, all you're doing is non-apology apologies. All you're doing is finding ways to perform restitution that only lines your pocket. And that's just bullcrap. And that's all i got to say on this topic. Oh, a couple other things as well, actually. Um, EA, with their EA Origin service, uh, it was revealed this week that their service is spyware. It's spying on what you does. It's not like with Steam, where they, where you can opt in or opt out of having your computer information collected, so, um, system specs, which is actually useful for publishers and developers. Know what it's designed for? No, they're just collecting everything you do on your computer and selling it to third parties, and that's a load of bull. And it issue, for EA issue a patch. I was willing to cut you some slack as you were doing okay and then most of the evil was going on to Activision, but this is a load of bull. Um, oh, the other bit is that for the noticed is for Forza, the latest Forza game, if you want to drive a Porsche, tough luck, EA got an exclusive deal on Porsche. Whoop-dee-doo. I mean, Porsche, I mean, there are other really hot cars out there and Porsche, Porsche makes a big deal about their branding and their logo and licensing that out. And so I could see them totally doing exclusive license for this stuff, just because just for the hell of it. I mean, God, there are Porsche wallets, there are Ferrari wallets, so and there are Ferrari sunglasses. And the only way thing that makes them Ferrari sunglasses is there's a logo on the thing. Top Gear has gone on, gone on at length about the, some of the baloney that happens with sports car licenses. And that's the same extension this year. So I don't care much about the Porsche thing. I wasn't planning on using the EA Origin service. This will cause me to give, sec give me th second thoughts to purchasing games that use the Origin service. Um, I mean, Battlefield 3, I don't know if I could run it full specs anyway. And plus, I still have Battlefield 2. 
and there are other games I can play. So, that's my main bits there. That's my rant. And there should be a new review coming up on Saturday of The Born Conspiracy. Look forward to it. Until then, I'm Count Zero, and I'll see you next time.